find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the awesome castle Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to get geeky, talk tech with you guys from the people who do this stuff all around in different groups and different areas and different expertises and, and professionalisms. Yes, we're making up words tonight. Uh, with me back in studio, in Studio A, it is John Chichilla at Chill on the Twitter with a new lighting situation. I'm liking it. I'm liking the look. <laughs> you like it? Looks, looks. It's, it's, it's dark. It's even. I don't, I don't know. We just don't point any lights at you, but they're on in spirit. I'm a shining beacon of light all on my That's own. right. We're lighting experts over here. <laughs> <laughs> How do you light a podcast? Well, we're still figuring it out. Um, and also, this is our first. This is a first for the show. So we started Patreon what, probably about what, a year ago, right? And we've had some some people uh, 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 contributing for a while, and uh, and over on the Mayhem Show, we we uh, we had the, usually the people have already been on, or we bring them back in, and so this is the first of this. First of all, uh, the first Patreon for this show, Terry Hammond of Thistle Sea Business <laughs> Development, <laughs> those mysterious people up in Cranberry we've learned about over the last year, is joining us on the show right now. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for asking. This is a uh, my first podcast in my whole life, so it's a first for you and for me. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, you know, I, this is um, um, I'd say this, this is new for this show, and uh, and we're hoping to get some more people to come in. And you're of course uh, been 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 on for a while, and but this is but it's interesting because we met well before, right? Um, I believe it was an, uh, an Alpha Lab open coffee that we had run into yes. each other. Yes. And actually, you started talking about how you were podcasting and, and how long you'd been doing it and enjoying it. And it was a, the conversation was I was really interested. And then you started talking about how you were podcasting professional wrestling, which I know almost nothing about. And <laughs> I was like, wow, this is this is passion right here. <laughs> um that we work with business owners like it we work a lot with people that are really passionate about what they do so uh i don't know i was i was intrigued uh upon meeting you then awesome awesome well it, it, great to have you on great to see uh you know what, what do you think about stuff going on in the tech world what your awesome things are and everything like that uh as we go here and uh everybody please check us out awesomecast.net that's where the show lives and uh, of course our awesome chat as well we had a really uh, fantastic interview actually on our awesome chat this past week. Uh, you remember we talked about a little camera a little bit ago called the uh, the Movi 4K camera that that you know it had that interesting thing where you use your phone and it, it, you pick the shots. Uh, well, that led to uh, of course it was it, it's something being pointed out by Livestream.com actually, and that led to them getting to us on Twitter and we talked to Max Hote, the co-founder of Livestream.com actually on the show. Uh, really cool talk with him and a really dove. Dove really into that the tech of that and how that works. Um, so it was really interesting uh, from a videography kind of standpoint for me, and, and it's a it's a, it is a cool uh, kind of thing that you know for kind of newbies to the area that want to live stream and do something a little higher end and, and have you know three or four hundred bucks to to rock into it. Um, but uh, but but you know I, I think it was, it was a really good one uh, over at awesomecast.net. Uh, you can also follow us at awesomecast on the Twitter. Uh, you can uh, check us out on uh, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. We got a great Facebook group as well uh, under AwesomeCast, so please join us over there. Uh, you can also now, oh, well, of course, live. Uh, we're live every Tuesday about 6:30 p.m. Eastern time, uh, barring me maybe being a little late and setting everybody up. You might get a little bit of that going on, uh, but you can also. Uh, now go to riversedgepgh.com 
And we're actually hanging out over there on Thursday mornings. You can get, catch a replay of the show on your on your drive in the work or the, the kickoff that Thursday morning. Maybe that can be the way that you listen to the show from now on. Uh, our, our, our good friends over there. And I was actually on uh, the River Talk radio show. Uh, you can check out the replay over there. That is episode, I know I have it linked over at awesomecast.net. Uh, but if you go check out episode 46, yeah, almost got that wrong, uh, 46 <laughs> over there, and uh, we, we're chatting about about probably about a third into that, and we talk about Awesome Cast, we talk about the community, um, including our awesome Patreons actually got mentioned, like Terry, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and a little bit about pro wrestling, of course, because let's be honest, it always kind of goes around to pro wrestling, doesn't it, with me? Um, so, <laughs> as you know. But... Um, and like like Terry here, you can also uh, follow our Patreon, patreon.com slash awesomecast. If you're getting any value out of this, if you want to support the show, and of course we don't expect everybody to, we, we're plenty happy if you guys share the show and 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 and, and everything. But, but as Terry knows, they're at the $5 level, which we've kind of turned into the executive producer level for the show, and you guys get some extra, extra goodies out of that, at being at that level, right? It's true. I have... Uh fantastic uh executive producer business cards and to get a um, little extra peek into what's going on in the show in advance um but i think the nicest part about being a patreon nothing to do with the things that you get but it's the sense that you feel excited and happy and proud to like help someone produce something that they care about that's important that's enhancing the community and people's lives so like i have a little piece of that and i love that awesome awesome uh, and thank you so much. And thank you also to uh, Mike Fedora, the Mike, at Mike Fedora show on the Twitter as well. Another executive producer. He also got the business cards. And, and thank you so much. And I encourage anybody. To, it's a new way to do it. And I'm hoping I'm hoping if we build this up enough, we've been looking at stuff for advertising. But I really want Patreon to be the way that these kinds of shows uh, get supported around here. And uh, so we don't have to do that. So give back if you can. Share the show. Otherwise, either way, we really appreciate it. And we're talking to a lot of really great people out there. And, and a lot of people saying they're I've been running into in the wild uh, at these entrepreneurial things I've been going to that have been listening to the shows and uh, had some really, really great things uh, to say about that. I really appreciate that. All right, let's get into it with our awesome things of the week. Um, well, I, I don't want, I want, I don't want to put Terry on the spot, you know, so she's new. Let's give her a comfort zone here. So I'm going to start with John this week. Uh, so John, chill out. What is your, uh, awesome thing of the week? So, so my awesome thing of the week is the gear 360 virtual reality camera oh. so so i tweeted about this yeah you <clears throat> got my interest on this one buddy so so samsung has has kind of pre obviously this leaked but it's going i, I can't imagine based on the the attention that it's getting it not being formally announced here in the next couple weeks but this is a virtual reality camera and it's going to accompany the release of the galaxy s7 I don't think you're going to get one of these free with every every S7 or anything, but it's going to be a device that kind of probably goes along with the Galaxy Gear VR. Um, this is more of your kind of home version. There's no price yet, but it does do um, a 360 degree recording via dual lenses or 180 degrees via single lens. Um, it can do a maximum resolution of 3840 by 1920 um, with the dual lenses or 1920 by 1920 in the single lens mode. Um, I think this would be kind of cool depending on the price point, even if for some of the larger like kind of home renovation stuff I do, if I recorded myself in VR and then time lapsed it and you could watch from 360 degrees like me rebuild my basement or tear out my backyard or rebuild my front porch. I, I just think it would give an interesting aspect to any of those kind of mundane things that you probably wouldn't be that interested in watching me do. Right. But if you could watch me do it in 360 degrees time lapse, <laughs> that makes everything <laughs> that awesome. Makes everything cool. <laughs> Um, and, no, and, and so, so this is a thing that your phone goes into, much like the Gear VR kind of thing, right? And and that like your your phone is still the guts in the in the in the technology behind it, right? Like this is just kind of a UFO looking thing with a bunch of lenses, right? So they haven't fully filled in the gaps on that. I've heard 
that this may have onboard storage. Mm -hmm. It may complement. Here's the thing is, I find it odd that you would have to plug your phone into this. <laughs> I'm trying to figure, like, where does the phone go when I'm looking at this? Like, thing? I'm guessing it, it would come down through the through the base or something like that. Okay. And it would kind of sit below. So you don't have, because you know how when you see those 360 degree pano photos and even video, you never see, like, when you look directly below, you kind of have that that gap where it can't capture right um i'm guessing that's where like it would you would go is the top of it to me it looks like there's kind of a power button and the top of it's maybe a microphone built in um again this i don't think you're going to be filming the next avengers in, in vr no but, but to me this is this is something that's that's attainable for the for the amateur at their house that wants to to take their own video recording to the next level and, and kind of produce it in a, in a VR setting. So if I can get my hands on one of them and or they're relatively inexpensive, um, I, I think we definitely need to, to, to throw this up for, for the show <laughs> and see how it I've works. I've been wanting to do... Because um, I... I've been looking at the Rico Theta cams, mm -hmm. uh, which you know they're like a three or four hundred dollar camera that does kind of the same thing, but with like two lenses basically mm -hmm. and stitches it together. Now, is it, are we talking? Is Samsung doing the still camera thing with this, or or is this like a video? Camera? It's supposed to be video. It is supposed to be video. Well, yeah. that makes things different because um, I've been kind of wondering, like, well, what can I do? What is the need for this? Because I started looking at the three hundred and sixty video with uh, when I got the Google Cardboard uh, a couple months ago. And, and and that really kind of got my mind going of like, OK, what can we do with this? And is anybody in Pittsburgh doing this? Right. Because I feel like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff in Pittsburgh that I think would be really interesting. in 360 degrees, um, you know, a lot, a lot of a lot of the, the, the scenery, a lot of the architecture, a lot of things happening in neighborhoods. Um, somebody like I was talking to somebody today about stuff happened up here in Beachview and we talked about, you know, Hey, if some of the stuff that I'm hearing about and they actually start developing stuff up here, you know, how much has East Liberty changed? What about seeing that skyline of Beachview that I see from my back porch change over time? Right. But what if we just put a camera right in the middle and say, Hey, this is Beachview now and be in the middle of it. And we take a look at that five years from now. I think that's, that's a, that's a huge opportunity mm -hmm. for a lot of things like that. Um, I think the other place you'll see those being used is by real estate agents who jump oh, yeah. on that stuff oh, totally. immediately, yes. just like drones, you know, and uh, any kind of leasing offices. Anytime you want to show somebody like, what are you getting before you get it? Uh, they'll be using it. Really anything that you want people to be there, right? Like, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see, I can think more and more like, what is it like to be ringside at a at a, at a wrestling show? Mm -hmm. Like especially for a small indie or something, right? And, and especially if it's something that I imagine this would become a more affordable way to do that, right? Um, you know, I can see just kind of taking one of these cameras and putting them on a post like at that corner right by the entrance ramp at the one show, and 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 having that thing happen, and you know, seeing seeing just everything that happens and all the moving parts, and, and the fans going crazy, and probably playing with the camera to be quite honest, um, you know, something like that, or on, on like the post, you know, or something like we've been wanting to do with a, a GoPro camera. Um, there's a lot of possibilities, and and the more accessible this becomes, the more uh, we can get out there and do some creative things. It's better than GoPro solution, right? With the uh, the YouTube jump idea, mm -hmm. that was geez, what what was that? That was like several thousand dollars at that point um at least five thousand i think but inaccessible for most people mm -hmm. right and uh unless you, unless you have the right thing that somebody really wants to do and putting the money for it what will be interesting and i hope they kind of figure out how they're going to do this is they need a way and maybe they can do it through youtube they need a way to give you a place to kind of put this so other people can then see it right but then also not only see it if you own Galaxy Gear VR. Right. Well, don't they, they have that on YouTube though? Because you do. can go in, you can see things, and you can use your mouse to you look around. You can use your mouse to kind of right. look around. So, and I think Star Wars did that with one of their videos. The video was extremely low quality, but it did work. Well, the, the one that they had on card or or the one they had on Facebook. The thinking. one they had on Facebook okay. was also released. Like I actually picked. I didn't. I noticed it on Facebook first. Yeah. And then. It, I think YouTube may have picked it up, but it was also on Galaxy Gear VR's VR app. Mm -hmm. So I could watch it via the Gear VR, but the quality was 
was rough. Bad. I noticed that how low quality it is, like on a five S. <clears throat> I was, I did, I did all the, uh, the Star Wars app, Google VR stuff, mm-hmm. um, and super, super low res. Really cool to be kind of in the scenes, especially having just seen the movie. Uh, when I was when I was playing with it, you know, just seeing me, uh, uh, you know, I actually left, left Big Hero Six on just so I know where the TV was, so I wouldn't get lost in my living room because mm-hmm. um, I was standing up. Uh, but you know, it, it's a uh, there's it, a lot of yeah, there's definitely a lot of opportunity there, and 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 this seems to be coming more accessible quicker. You know, I mean, it, it, if if something like all of these Rico Theta cams and this Samsung VR thing uh, pops up. Um, around the time when we can actually buy Oculus, Oculus Rifts and whatever the next uh, the Google Cardboard iteration could be. Um, that I mean, even just having that to say, hey, everybody can get a cardboard and do this. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what they're doing in schools, right? Um, I think that's a really, really cool space to be in. Let's see, let's see what's going to happen from there. So, awesome. Go check that out. Terry, what's your awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing of the week. Um, so, it's... The name of it is um, Seven Shifts, S-H-I-F-T-S, um, and it's an app, um, but it kind of speaks to a specific problem that businesses run into. I kind of tend to look at things through that business lens because that's uh, the brunt of my work at Pizzlesee, um, but Seven Shifts in, sp- in uh, particular helps owners or managers schedule their employees And this sounds kind of boring and horrible, but when you look at the fact that before these kinds of things existed and this technology existed, um, people used literally paper, um, paper and pen. And then the big um, improvement to that was using Excel. And so you have a manager, spends all of this time scheduling employees. Of course, as soon as the document's created, immediately it is obsolete because people want to switch. And you're just, it's a constant battle with this. And it's its not convenient for the person doing it at all. It's not convenient for the people using it at all. And it's, on top of all that, it just takes a long time. It's hard. Um, so some really smart people, I guess, figured out that this is a really big pain point um, for businesses. And I really like Seven Shifts. I have some experience in the restaurant industry. I actually used to own a restaurant um, with my husband. And boy, was this a real big pain point for us. And mm-hmm. so um, they've taken this technology that, that has existed, I'm sure, for a while. And, and in particular, Seven Shifts is catered to restaurants um, where you have people that are working different shifts, splitting shifts, different wages, um, potentially being in different roles on the same day, on different days. And the, the really fantastic part is it's not just about like I can now do what I did on paper in an app. But it's also um, people have the ability to say, I don't feel well or I'd like the day off. I'm giving up my shift. It makes it available to all the other people that are qualified to take it. Um, Someone says, I'll pick it up. A note goes to a manager or supervisor saying so-and-so wants to switch with this person. They okay it from their phone. Um, And suddenly this, this task that used to involve telephone calls, all this garbage, it's done. It's done in like five seconds. And, um, it's, it's kind of a shock when you're used to doing it this sort of old labor intensive way to you, you really can't believe not just your savings and time, but frankly, it was just an ugly, horrible task. And now suddenly it's, um, it's kind of a breeze and you spend your time actually scheduling people where they should be and when they should be instead of making charts and scratching them off. (laughs) So, um, I love, I love like continuous improvement and, um, this is a big one. These kinds of things are great. This, I, I worked at Kinko's in high school and part of college. And then I worked at Starbucks for a little while after college. This, mm-hmm. that was the biggest ordeal for management was scheduling and shift switches and all of that to the point where managers would sit down for like an entire eight hour shift of their own to try to figure out the schedule for the next week. And then to your point, someone comes in and, you know, unfortunately there's been a death in the family or there was whatever reason came up and they need to then recreate the wheel all back over again. Right. And, and, and tools like this, like, um, this, this just amazes me because the complexity that takes place to your point with different wages, making sure employees don't go over 40 hours a week, 
Um, I could see this also being huge if, and I, when I was at Starbucks, there were a lot of times where other stores would call and say, hey, do you have anyone that has extra hours this week they can work? I don't want to have to pay them overtime, but I need someone to fill a four-hour shift. Can, can you throw me someone? Um, and so you would ha- you not only have to deal with your own internal store, but then other stores. So th- to me, this is, this is brilliant. It definitely fills a need. And I, and I, I can't imagine this would, I, I'm not surprised that I'm surprised this wasn't built sooner, but the complexity around this is just ridiculous and it's much well, harder than one would think. And seven shifts isn't the first. I mean, there's another great one out there called when I work, which is geared to, um, other industries, I think retail would work nicely with when I work schedule fly, which is another restaurant specific one. Um, I think, I think the other thing it does, and you touched upon, you know, part of it is making it easier for the person working in the business. But the other huge thing is that in a, in a way, and in a really important way, give some control back to the employees. Um, Because, you know, if you're sitting there and it's your day off and you're like, oh, you know, I'm kind of bored. I'd pick up a shift if there was one. Suddenly you can, Mm -hmm. if there is one, you can do it. And, but it's, it's up to you. And um, I think that, you know, it gives people more earning opportunity if they want it. Um, if not, that's fine too. But, um, and I think the other thing that most of these companies have done, um, and seven shifts is no, um, outlier there is that they, they do a really reasonably, um, like a monthly pay as you go, you know, S S S A A S. (laughs) Um, but it's, it's not, you know, a huge outpouring for a small business, for a new business, um, for someone who wants to try it. So, it's kind of, I know it's not very glamorous and it's not tech for the sake of tech, but, um, it's the kind of thing that like, if you get eight hours of your life back, that's mm-hmm. huge. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, yeah. it's, it's enormous. Looking at this, like I'm looking at the, when I work one and it's like, it's like, you know, uh, uh 20 employees is like 29 a month, you know, yeah. that, and then, you know, versus, yeah, yeah, really reasonable for something like that. And, and versus that time that you have been paying somebody X amount per right. hour to do. I mean, that's incredible. Um, I mean, this is this is the kind of thing where uh, I was listening to the triangulation and they were talking about kind of the future of, yeah, we're, we're going to be using computers to do all these things, all these tasks. And then that just opens us up to do other things, you know. And, yeah. uh, and I, I think this is a perfect example of something like that. I mean, you know. I think- there are the other couple of nice little features. They allow people to communicate, um, employees to communicate um, via a private um, or I guess a separate network necessarily than like their cell phone. So if they want to have work related discussions that they want to keep work related, they can. Um, you also can broadcast messages to your entire staff. So if you want to say, hey, there's 12 feet of snow, we're closed. Um, <laughs> It's done. No one has to Mm -hmm. drive in the snow. It's not dangerous. It's funny that actually happened to me two weekends ago, Um, you know, when we got, what, eight inches here in the city, which was nothing compared to some other places. But people drove in on a Saturday to be there at seven. And, you know, it was really dangerous and probably unnecessary. And this avoids it. That's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, Hopefully solving some problems, though. So check that out. That's uh, seven shifts, the number seven shifts dot com. All right, so uh, my awesome thing is uh, a little late to the game. I'll admit it. Chilla, you're probably laughing at me because I'm just kind of discovering this thing. No, no, no. And and this this is something that takes a while, I think, to finally pull the trigger on. So I don't Yeah, and decide that's the thing that works for you, right? Um, So Plex. Yeah, that thing Plex that apparently every cord cutter is already using except me. Um, So so I've been iffy on... You know, because I, 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 you know, I have Netflix, Hulu. I haven't really been distracted. But then, meanwhile, I have so many DVDs that have been just collecting dust this whole time. And it has literally been the only DVD player I have in my living room is my Xbox 360, and that drive mm-hmm. doesn't open sometimes. <laughs> so most of the games I play, I either put a game in and it's in there for like six months until I finish the game. Like I just finished the Assassin's Creed Three, and then I put Halo Four in, um, or and, and everything else has been digital that I've been playing. So, so it's like, oh, I really want to watch that movie, man. I wish I could just like kick that over to my iPad or something while I'm working, you know, up at work hard or, or up, a, you know, or, or at the coffee shop or something, you know, just to put that on in the background, you know, because I'm not always in the, because I only use the office here when I'm doing DVD production, mm-hmm. uh, which is less and less these days. And, and I got like that first gen Roku on there and I, and I use that. But, but again, I like, I'm going through and magically rediscovering movies I own. That I haven't watched in forever, 
and just uh, just becoming more accessible. And yeah, they're not HD, and I notice it sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. I see the compression a little bit. You know, from handbrake, and uh, and uh, but 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 still have that accessibility. I watched V for Vendetta the other night. I haven't watched that movie in years. <laughs> it's a great movie. And really kind of applicable to some things happening these days, I think. Um, I recommend it. Uh, but, uh, but you know, the, a really cool thing. And, 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 and as I'm going, I'm kind of going ahead and dumping those into Plex. I've also been uh, kind of poking around at an app called Unify. Uh, Y-O-U-Nify. You can check okay. out. Uh, it's been actually advertised on the Twit Network recently is where I first heard about it. It's a free app and, and you can like see your files and pull it up on your iPhone or an iPad. Uh, so I'm just using the free version of the Plex, and and here it is a little bit right now. Like, see, I got a little bit of a. Uh, sometimes, it, so they're filling in a lot of the uh, information here. Like, you know, we got nice posters for V for Vendetta and Max Payne on here, but we notice uh, something went a little weird with this Resident Evil because it was a double disc pack, and I didn't rename the the second movie on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just got some weird, you know, clip from from the middle of it. But generally, and even the wrestling stuff, because there's nothing going to be in there. But you know, my Star Star Wars DVDs are tossed in there, and and they all um, uh, Transformers is actually the Transformers from 1985, not 2007. <laughs> Michael Bay, um, you know, Think things like that, things like that, and, and 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 like like why do I own Snake Eyes? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, and, and also discovering a little bit of yourself. Like, why did I buy this in some of these? I just cases? like to tell you, my uncle was in Snake Eyes. Was in Snake Eyes. He was like an extra in a casino scene. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, other thing. Uh, Small world. Why do I own Spy Kids? I, like, where did I get Spy Kids from? <laughs> where is that in my collection? Uh, but but no. It, 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 so, so, and I'm not paying for it. It, it. You know, they do have the premium edition. But I think they've recently kind of let a lot of their apps go free lately. Yeah, a lot of their apps used to cost money. Um I think they, they kind of released those free. They have a subscription model where right. you can get a lot of stuff when remote, which sounds like a pretty, if you're, I could see if you were someone who traveled a lot, I could see that whole right. mobility thing being huge. And I'm kind of wondering if that Unify app is going to solve that problem for me in the meantime. Um, cause it's always been, I've, I've always thrown the, this batch of movies I've had and, uh, on a, you know, a lesser computer is sitting somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's always been, I go to use it and there's not enough horsepower. Like I had, you remember play on was something that would mm -hmm. take like Hulu and throw it to my TV yeah. somehow. Um, and then nothing, it, we always get choked up because I'm always kind of have a lesser computer. I got a 2011 Mac mini sitting upstairs that really just kind of hosting all my files and doing the backup cycles and everything. And sometimes I'll throw a process at it. Uh, but, uh, but, but now it's doing this and everything was smooth. I didn't, I didn't notice a single hiccup probably the entire time, entire weekend. And we watched at least like six movies. It's usually, it's usually pretty good as long as the client that you're going to has native support for the format okay so when i say that so so plex will actually transcode on the fly so if you actually decided hey i'm going to encode all these files in we windows media format but then i'm going to play <laughs> them back on an apple tv yeah um it has to transcode it on the fly to mpeg so there's going to be a lot more going on meanwhile so, i've already made these m4vs because i right. handbrake off of my own <clears throat> that i own dvds um which which that's a pretty good standard and should should work for anything right. i think where plex really also shines is when you have say you've been doing this for an extremely long time and you did have various formats and various devices that maybe some of them didn't handle mpeg so it had to transcode for those devices i think that's where it really pegs your processor mm -hmm. but pretty much all you're doing is here's the file let's throw it across the network right so it's so and, you and, should rarely see any kind of. And these days, it's a, it's a it's a wireless end network, um, you know, and pretty much gigabit as far as the 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 the, the you know the wires themselves. I mean, there, there's just plenty, plenty, plenty bandwidth to go around to throw this to um, apparently to my phone and uh, my phone or my laptop, and then I can Chromecast it from mm -hmm. there. That was, I think, that's the big <clears throat> turnaround, and that's what sold me because again, you know, we talk about barriers in a lot of ways. That's the barrier to do this thing. I got a computer sitting up there that, like, I can throw this at this. So why aren't you just using the Xbox app? I haven't loaded it. Um, why am I not using the, the, the oh, you know why I'm not using the, the, the Amazon Fire app? 
because it's a yeah. pain in the butt to log in. And every time I go do it, it's just like, Ugh, I don't feel like doing okay. this right now. Like, like it, it really is. It, um, there's, a, there's another app that keeps wanting me, wanting me to do a Facebook login. So it pops up a browser window like Android, like in the middle of my, because Fire TV is an Android device, mm-hmm. right? And it just doesn't work for some reason. Hmm. And then I just give up and I don't use the app, right? And it kind of depends on where you're at. If you want to sit down and set it up, I sat down and sat this up and we're good to go. And I didn't realize all the movies are on my hard drive. <laughs> before <laughs> and then and then again going through my dvds i didn't realize all the movies that i have i'm surprised how many movies are in here that i have on dvd that were already in here and i don't know what i did you know um but but again it's, it's pretty cool to do that um there are also and i don't know how relevant these are anymore but there you can also throw apps on this like i noticed there's a usa network app on here um, there's, you know, you know, stuff that I've used. I can't, I don't even know if I can find this. <laughs> in case you want to watch, uh, <laughs> like reruns, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to say in case you want to watch like, uh, the Shawshank Redemption <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> well, that's what I wonder sorry. because actually uh, I'm curious cause well, you know, I, 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 I've been using the USA app to watch like Monday night raw. Um, oh, okay. Because See, sorry, not the pro wrestling thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it only works. But it only works on the iOS apps for it, USA Now for some reason. And so oh. I don't have anything that's going to throw it to my TV. And I've lo- long lost my uh, HDMI adapter for my for the iPad three. Right. I think I, I I misplaced it when it stopped working on like the original iPad for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um. So 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 I need I need some kind of solution there, or maybe if I had an Apple TV or something, I could throw it via that. You know. Just, so because I've just I've been watching Raw the last couple weeks just on my iPad sitting there on the coffee table, and that's it. You know. Um. But it's been smooth and it's been okay, and I'm not I'm not pirating at that point. So and that was I mean I'll be completely honest. That was the last thing. I was not doing legally was <laughs> was watching Monday Night Raw because I'm like, well, I'm paying for Hulu. I could watch it the next morning or I could dial up this site and watch it. Um, and you know, let's be honest, a lot of people with sports, they're dealing with that kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to, to try to work around it because there's no viable option. You know, uh, USA is not on Sling TV, for instance, although I'm this close to trying out at least the trial of Sling TV because Lucha Underground is on there. So that's that's and I, and I know actually Bobby F J Town from Wrestling Mayhem Show he did a Sling TV trial just to watch the season premiere of Lucha Underground. So that's well, that works. They're getting those interesting networks like El Rey um, on there. So it's an option. Um, so again, this is kind of the first weekend with this. Again, I have a lot of DVDs to go to stick in here, um, and eventually I'm going to have to figure out like how do I redo like if it's kind of mislabeled certain things. Um, I, I'm finding the information, but it doesn't look like it's everything. I, but I probably have to do it on the computer um, that they start at. So, uh, so it's Plex, Plex.tv. If you want to check it out, you basically kind of download a server software that's free onto the computer where all your movies are going to be sitting on, and then um, you're able to just kind of go to Plex TV, log in, and if you're on the network, it works. Mm-hmm. So in house, it works. Again, if you're traveling or if you want to have your movies at the office, it's a little bit of a different story, but it's working great. Handbrake, I recommend that. You might have to do... Oh, this is the thing that hung me up. Here's a little tip. Um, El Capitan broke handbrake. It did. I've used it numerous times. Right. Um, some, something happened, and... Uh, well, for the... Um, I had to download the 64-bit edition, but... Right. But maybe that's it. Maybe I grabbed the wrong version, too. But you have to get in ter- Terminal, download Homebrew, and, and it have it install that um, the decoder. Because okay. you don't have to grab that extra file if you're mm-hmm. if you're like decoding like bot DVDs. Um, just do kind of a quick search for El Capitan broke handbrake and you'll find uh, a Reddit article that has that code, and um, uh, on, it's on the Mac. So um, I couldn't get it working on Windows XP, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I think I'm not in, in, un- installing. Uh, I'm trying to put it on every computer available to me so I can get through all these DVDs quicker, basically. <laughs> So I have two Macs going right now, and I just switch the DVDs whenever I walk downstairs or up into the studio, up into the office, and just like, okay, next one, okay, next one, and just kind of get... That's why you see these various stacks kind of going on down here as I go. Uh, so it's going to get very interesting here very soon. Uh, side note, I need to apparently get a DVD or a Blu-ray player, because I don't have one, and I'd like to rip those as well, so they're HD. But um, like, I can probably help you with that. <laughs> There's there's a really good um, 
what's his name uh, from Mac Break? I and Nako. The Nako. Nako. He did yeah. a really good kind of run down on how to do all that and actually recommended like a twenty three dollar Blu Ray. So because that's usually what I get or for your Mac. That's what I get for my Macs or like the twenty dollar one. Right, mm-hmm. um, and I was really surprised because we just picked we got a Mac Mini at the one job I was working, and and uh, I was like, yeah, you need, and then and like we got the Mac Mini in, and then that week he says, hey, can you rip this DVD for me to have? Because they like to have all the again have their DVDs in one place so the students can have them uh, to watch when they when they bring them through, and uh, instead of having to deal with a DVD player because who has a DVD player, he hands it to me, and I look over and I'm like, oh right, I need a DVD player. Like there's always that right mm-hmm. after you buy it, Mac. <laughs> it's like, oh right, that's that's not a thing we do anymore. Um, but again, yeah, twenty bucks is this really slick Samsung one for that one. Mm-hmm. So just go on Amazon. Um, I just started investigating it. I didn't know if handbrake handles that as well. Uh, I presumed it does. So I have to investigate that a little bit too. So that's my long plex uh, Unify. You you. Unify or Unify app? It's both. I've got a question here. Um, it's an app on your phone, and then it's a program you download. And I think you spelled it right. Uh, you as in you, the person, Nify, and uh, initial work. Kind of like a greenish uh, icon over there. Hey, I want to give a shout out. I'll uh, hear late in the game to our friends Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, uh, providing uh, Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for almost two years now. So thank you so much for them. Um, they are supporting the show. You know what? You know, I said I want like less sponsors. I want sponsors that like you know are cool and give us pizza. Like that. That's like that's that's allowed, right? Um, in in, in the long run here. Uh, but no, big thanks to them, Rico and the guys. You know, this is this is how awesome they are. They know the phone number when I call in. I didn't have to say anything. Like like they they said help. Pepperoni pizza. See you in twenty minutes. Like, uh, yeah, we're good. And and there you go. And it's all good. Like that. That's the kind of people they're paying attention to that kind of stuff. They're great with their customers. Um, it's awesome stuff. They're down here in Beachview, right along the tracks. In the, it's coming up, Beachview. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Keep an eye on Beachview in the next couple of years. And uh, also the Main Street in Carnegie, PA. The exit is open. You can get to it in Carnegie, Mad Mike of Poughkeepsie, New York. Um. But uh, thanks to them, thanks to them for supporting the show, and uh, we we have a we have a we have a, a a a crazy awesome pizza neighborhood over here, and these guys are sticking out in in, in some stiff competitions. So the guys have been here for years, and I think they've become a really really good, uh, really good, uh, 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 really good uh, uh, their own thing. <laughs> Sorry, uh, so. Thanks to them. All right, let's get to uh, chill. You got an app of so oh, so building on your. Um, this is this is because I went down your rabbit hole a while ago. Oh, um, this is an app. It's called Identify. It's lowercase i, capital D E N T I F. Sorry, my sti- I'm sorry, my me? stitcher was running. Oh no problem. Oh, I um, really bumped something. Um, so Identify is a Mac app. So it's in the it's in the Mac App Store. Um, it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I know that's probably seems extremely expensive. Oh, to whoa, some. whoa, whoa, whoa! High dollar there. Look at you, money bags. <laughs> um, but what I will say, this app does is, if you are like myself and had a back catalog of many, 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 many movies and TV shows and files, mm. um, you actually just drag and drop them all into this application. Okay. It goes out and queries IMDB and a and a bunch of various other internet databases and pulls in every piece of metadata for your files. Um, so when you were talking about a movie, it actually throws in all the actors. It throws in. Wow. You can actually pick. You can actually pick the DVD covers from around the world. So if you want, like Ooh, all uh, Japanese, <laughs> like if you wanted the Japanese cover. For mall rats, no, yes, I do. <laughs> you could throw that on your mall. Yes, rats we copy. do. This is happening. So, so nine ninety nine doing it. So the cool thing is, and what you were talking about was that you know maybe it got some wrong, maybe it didn't get certain things right. Um, as you go through, you, it, you can either say, you know, I'm going to roll the dice and let it let it just rip through and save all the data, mm-hmm. or you can tell it. 
and and go through and approve each one. And when you go through and approve each one, you can um, you can pick the different cover art and you can validate some of the data. Um, the other thing that you can do with it is <clears throat> if it can't figure out what it is and you know it exists on IMDb or some of these other sites, you can actually throw in the link and it will actually then pull in all that information from that IMDb entry. Nice. Um, you can also set it as it saves through, especially, and this is especially useful for um, for multiple seasons of a TV show. You can actually tell it to rename all of the files into like lost space S O one for season one space E O one. So it does episode one. So and you can do it, a format. You so, can, so you can have it auto reformat doing. files. It, it's this application is amazing. Yeah. Relatively simple. It's not splashy by, mm-hmm. by the looks of it on the screenshots here. They didn't even blow up the screenshots. <laughs> they just obscured the desktop for whoever this is. Um, I, I've used apps like this for music in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's been several of them over the years, and they would go through and and and, um, and compare them to Grace Note, or is it still called Grace Note these days? The, 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 the former C, uh, CD database, mm-hmm. uh, CDDB, D-D. I believe, uh, I think became Grace Note, and that got bought by somebody. I can't remember right now, uh, but but no, it's a very it's a very similar thing. It's interesting that IMDb has become the the database for this kind of thing. And it's owned by Amazon. Oh, I didn't know that. As you will know, if you go look up Man in the High Tower or Man in the High Castle on IMDb, and it looks a little bit different than everybody else. Um, like like a lot different than anything, anybody else. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's interesting. That's the first time that kind of reared its uh, head that Amazon's like, yeah, we, we, we completely own this. Actually, here it is right here. If you guys are on video, you get this giant splash and says, hey, get on Amazon and, 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 and stream all the episodes and, and, and you get some different stuff and the, the page just looks completely different than everybody else and different color scheme. So um, you're kind of curious. That's what happens when you own something like that. So um they're just abusing their power. I'm, I'm looking up transparent and see that they did anything there. I know. Eh, no, that looks pretty much the same too. Do they just do a redesign, or am I just on a low resolution? I'm probably on a low resolution. Yeah, we'll just get that over here. I was gonna uh, say if nine ninety nine ninety nine seems like a barrier to entry. Um, consider what your time is worth. You probably you probably <laughs> get your time back the first two times you use it to search for anything. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. And that's what, that's what I can do. And it is a Mac app. I, I don't know why I was thinking you were talking on iOS app Mm-mm. for some yeah, reason, it's a Mac app. but no, it's a Mac app. Well, this, you're not, this, you know, nine for your phone. I think 10 bucks for a Mac app. Dude, that's, that's standard. Yeah, and you can literally just drag every MPEG that you have mm-hmm. in select all can open Apple a drag them on top of the app and it just fires through them yeah um, it's it's pretty pretty darn cool if you ask me until you open the wrong transformers and you get mad and michael bay <laughs> michael bay it messed up on what was the one that it had a really hard time with was um uh the scarlett johansson movie where they're clones lucy no where they're clones her and ewan mcgregor i don't know she's jordan one. 2 delta I got nothing for you. So nope, no. Nope. Everybody to the IMDb's. That's where I'm going. <laughs> um, no, it's um, I've been calling it Unify. Oh, hey, uh, we got we got a note from our our show noter uh, uh, Missy upstairs uh, in the upstairs office. Uh, found it and tweeted it properly. I've been calling it Unify. It's apparently Unity. Unity. Okay. Unity. Like you, the person. T. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, I, I see a pop up every once in a while because it keeps checking my hard drive. Um, but you know why that's uh, more interesting is it actually it's more than just videos. It's it's actually files on your desktop. Mm-hmm. You know that that you can have accessible to. So I think there's some other use cases for that. So did you figure out the, the Scarlett Johansson movie, The Island? The it's Island, two thousand five <laughs> movie. It takes the movie takes place in the year twenty nineteen. Um, where they're seemingly residents of a utopian but contained facility. Mm. Um, this controlled and, and they're in this controlled environment. And go watch it because it was really really cool. All right. When you said it had trouble, what happened? It picked them. So the island. It picked a different movie called The Island. Oh. Um, that had it was like a foreign movie. 
Um, it's like French, and there's odd nudity in it. <laughs> like, that, and it was like an old '80s movie, I think. Yeah, it, it was just completely different. It was a completely different The Island. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of movies out there that all have the same name that are, that are older. Um, I'm sure it'll get confused on things if you just name the file Spider Man, and you knew what sure. it was, but. Um, so that so yeah so but it did it does give you the option like I said I didn't notice that it picked the wrong one because I didn't realize there were multiples, um, and when it I just went back and you can actually go in and say nope I want this one and it resaved all the data over top and that's the problem especially if you have a that's massive great. collection like that you're mm-hmm. not gonna know until you come around to it right mm-hmm. and and are you especially if you do have that mass collection are you Let's be honest. Are you really getting to every video, every movie there in, in any due time at that point? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I cannot tell you how long it's been since I watched The V for, for Vendetta. Yet I know I watch Hackers at least once a year. So there you go. Um, I watched that the other day. I, I kind of want to watch <laughs> it again. I, I was kind of, but then again, it's that DVD sitting on the shelf. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to deal with that. But I'm going to put it in the queue. I'm going to bump it up in the queue, just like I bumped up the crow, just like, just like I just got Akira uh, um, um, thrown in there. Um, there's a lot of playing favorites there. Sorry, honeymooners or, or honeymoon in Vegas. You're going to the bottom of the pile. Sorry about that. Uh, Nick Cage. It's a bad night for Nick Cage. Sorry. Um, so, oh, hey, I want to talk about synergies. So this is an oldie but a goodie. Something I used actually on this very setup like years and years and years and years ago. It was free at the time. It's not anymore. And, and I kind of I was inspired because... Um, um, the great people at Work Hard Pittsburgh, they were setting up some service space for a project I was working on. And I, I'm, I'm watching as he goes from his mouse from a Windows computer to like three uh, Ubuntu screens above it, which is just like awesome. And just kind of it feels like a hacker movie. Right. Um, you know, command lining and all that stuff, you know, and uh, I, thought, I thought in the like, hacker movies, everything was in 3D. And yeah, it was like, I know. You, you fly through the file. I systems. know. And then you have Penn Teller there to explain everything that's going on. <laughs> And 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 that sort of thing. I mean, that's 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 how it is. Every that was time. him, wasn't it? Because he's not read, he's not listed on IMDb. He's not. No. Oh, that's, that's he doesn't a shame. get credit for that. Because I I was like, that's Penn, and I look it up, and it was like, all over eh. that thing. Yeah, no, nope. his stage name or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he, he his name's not in there. Um, Pendulet, Pendulet, that's the mm-hmm. name. Not, they call him Pen Teller. Jeez, what am I thinking? Um, but but like I saw him do that. I'm like, wow, how he's doing that? And I'm like, wait. I had a software that did exactly that. And for whatever reason, like it kind of got kludgy and stopped working. Um, so I went back to it. I remember the name. It's Synergy. Um, S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y. Synergy-project.org. And, and I went to check it. I'm like, I need to go back to that. And I thought I had that thought. And during Awesome Cast last week, I went on this site, realized you had to buy it. I didn't even think twice about it. I dropped the 10 bucks on this thing. And and you're good to go. It does Mac. It does uh, uh, Windows. Apparently, Windows XP, from the looks of things, are around here in the studio. Um, so Mac, Windows, Linux, you're good to go. And and as you know, Chilla, I have all three right mm-hmm. here on this desk. I, I haven't installed it on the Linux machine yet, though. Um, or I could have installed it on the one in front of you, because that's actually supposed to be a chat machine. Um, but uh, but no, it, it's completely worth it. If you, you have some kind of insane... A bonkers setup like I have for my podcast studio, because um, I, I mean you you know I have like a mouse hiding back here that's for this computer up here that I don't need a lot, but sometimes I do. I need to go set something up or move it to the chat window or or something. Or this one here has like minimal space. I got keyboards all over the place. I'm I'm pulling this drawer out so I can I can I can write something over on the Mac over here if need be. And it's just it's just obscene. Okay. So- yeah, so one of the tricks to this, and I'm going to do a, a piss poor job of explaining this, but bear with me. So one of the tricks to Synergy is that you write, you're sharing a mouse and keyboard, right? but you're using the monitor that's plugged in to every one of the computers. So you actually have to have the devices somewhat physically close, right? Because you right. have to have right. all the monitors surrounding you. So the real trick is what do you do when you have computers in other rooms because i ran into this issue in my house why would you do that so so here's here's the trick wait 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 are you uh, oh, hold on hold on i wait i think because i'm 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 not wrapping my head around exactly what you're getting at here now we know that you have a home automated the crap out of your house so if you had like so in the basement i have a server that runs right 
but you have a server. I have server. Oh, I have multiple servers all over the place that run. But, um, but so it. So for instance, you and you're in in the office upstairs, right? There's a mini up there, isn't there? Right, right. And I have the Drobos on there. All the all the all the backup files for all the projects are on there, and that's all backing up the Backblaze, and it's, it's good to go. Right. So what I actually did was on some different systems was because the, the, now that mach, those machines are physically in other rooms mm-hmm. and let's just say you wanted to kind of spread other machines across other monitors. So what I actually did was <clears throat> I would remote in to the machine and bring up the screen and machines that were on different floors, like say it was the floor above you, I would make it where you went up because you can control where you have to tell it, like what's to the what monitors to the left, what monitors to the right. Right, right. You kind of you, you have that layout, and yeah. and you should see mine. Mine's like an L right now. Okay. <laughs> so I would make it anything that was down in the basement or upstairs. Mm-hmm. You would go to one of the, the far left or far right computer, and then go up or down. So, so and then it would so, show to, up to put in this the, to, to the think, virtual window of that machine. Right. So to think about that, so you virtually logged in this machine, so it's like taking over your screen, right? Mm-hmm. But you have to pull your. So you're not just like I. I go up, it goes to the monitor above the monitor that this is at. I go left, it goes to this monitor, this monitor, this monitor over here. I'm pointing to them as if you guys could see them, you know. Um, <laughs> versus versus. Oh. If you're sitting in your living room and your mouse goes up, you know in your head that's a machine that's sitting upstairs. Mm-hmm. And this is ex- extremely um, useful for the machine locks up and the only thing you can do is like control alt delete and you know the cursor key arrows to get to the restart menu. <laughs> it's completely useful for that because you can't get the screen. You can't remote into it because the port's down for remote access. Mm-hmm. But you know that if you move your mouse up on this screen hit control alt delete you know the behavior right you know right, the key code yeah. you know the behavior you can kind of work your guess, way through it guesstimate it right yeah. terry are you following along with this because I'm, I'm half lost That's myself very creative. <laughs> it, the 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 usefulness of it of of this application is just shy of seven shifts <laughs> i'm i'm imp- i really i mean that's like you take something that's already useful and make it useful in a completely different way than what was probably originally intended. So, when, I think this I mean, was originally used star. for like developers. Yeah, that's oh, where yeah. I saw it first. I, that's the biggest thing. Well, like this guy, like the, he's a networking admin guy, so he has all the things going on. Um, you know, like one Ubuntu is a desktop; the other is just a command prompt where he can go in and he. And I saw him; I, I, I loved it, and I, and, and I, I was rather proud of myself. I knew some of the commands he was using. I'm like, I know exactly what he's doing in there. I just don't know how the server's set up. Um, you know, in the freaking Linux, mm-hmm. right? Not DOS like I grew up on. Um, but then again, I've had that Ubuntu installation; it didn't work out so well, and had to try to key around it right um but uh but uh no and that like i said it kind of inspired me because i'm like yeah i i i forgot that easy way to do it um but and also for you know production people you know i gotta think you know um um you know for for video having a big or multiple monitors is important and maybe you have something where uh you're doing the editing on this but you throw everything to this computer over here so you can run the processes Mm-hmm. You know, um, probably even so for 3D artists that have like maybe a server farm to send things to if they need to get over to that server and, and do something there. And maybe they throw up a monitor to keep an eye on it. Um, and, and, and I'm pretty sure it works that way. I'm not a 3D guy myself. I just know th- know some. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's or just that computer that's over um, on your TV, you know, that is your media server. Mm-hmm. And, and, and instead of you, know, you always have your laptop anyways. Uh, so so why not kick over? And, and we've used other things in the past, like um, um, what was the, the mouse one? Um, it was an app. I'll never remember it now. Uh, but it was an app on my phone, and I think I paid for it too. Uh, and and it would help me. It it would just turn this into a trackpad to to use on any computer. It, but it, it worked over Wi-Fi. It worked That's, over Wi-Fi. My, one thing that I um, like, I know what you're talking about. Um, I wish there was one that made it work. A, it acted like a Bluetooth trackpad. I think it was called like Mouse Out or something like that. But yeah, something like that. Well, there was one that was called like Eye Control as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a few using, out there because they they actually had one too that they they had kind of like a thing that you could load onto your Apple TV as well. 
and there's and there's, and there's I'm sure plenty better ones as well. So, uh, so I'm trying to find. I, I caught. I'm, I'm sorry. I copy and pasted this over, and I didn't see who sent it over. I think this actually. No, this isn't. Is this cars? No, this is somebody else. No, this is cars. Cars, let me know if this is you in the chat room. Um, <laughs> his awesome thing of the week. Uh, Los Angeles has invented the multimodal, multimodal navigation app of my dreams, uh, according to this article. I really didn't get to dive into this too much here. Uh, but uh, while well, they're talking about Los Angeles, so it has to be cars now that I think about it. Uh, so, uh, so, 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 um, yeah, uh, this... Th- this is a giant transit app that has everything from zip cars to taxis to lift to motorbike to tax. I said what's taxis. a flitway? Yeah, what is a flitway? Somebody, uh, cars, what's a flitway? This is your neighborhood. <laughs> what 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 kind of weird stuff do you have there? Because I'm is thinking, insane. is that like Port Authority? But then I'm like, but it has public transportation. Yeah, it's like, so... is, that your, is that your BART, you know? But, but it may be, I think it's combining like Google Maps public transportation stuff along with just everything else it's just pulling in all the data and this if you guys are on video like there's there's a lot of stuff going on here you know um that that that's awesome that's awesome you know i I was looking at um quasi similar to this there was an article that i sent out and i actually I actually had uh, uh, kicked it out to the Pittsburgh uh, government Twitter accounts I was like hey is this useful for you guys there's a company um that was that that came up with uh, some some uh, application that looks at um, like public transportation planning and showing impacts on traffic in certain areas, and they had actually they just kind of signed up uh, San Francisco to be a part of that, and uh, you know for for kind of city planning, right? Like we have a construction in this area, what is that going to do for everything else? We change this bus route, what is that going to do for traffic in the area? Because everybody else from there has to drive now or figure that out, right? Did you do that because of the pending red line? outage that we're going to have here oh the red line oh beach view is up in arms about the red line outage coming up here as they re- relay the tracks but let's be honest it's going to be better for uh for beach view in general i mean looking at allentown well hopefully they'll do like allentown where they replace all the tracks and then shut down the t-line oh i hope not because <laughs> if they did that we we're just going to die on the vine out here um but uh there's nobody will have any reason to pass through uh but uh but no i i thought because i know i know pittsburgh's really big on you know we had the interview with kim Lyons a couple weeks ago on awesome chat and we really just talked about what pittsburgh's doing data wise mm-hmm. right and and it felt like it was along the same lines maybe they're looking at stuff like this but um already and maybe it maybe this is more for bigger cities like like san francisco versus a pittsburgh um so i don't know i think those things are also really important and it's kind of um overlooked sometimes because uh for travelers um i know that when i travel internationally especially i like to take mass transit and i use them and when it exists people use it and not just pittsburghers so that's that's pretty amazing actually yeah exactly i'm 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 constantly amazed uh uh, mad mike visited us from up in up, up in new york and uh he just used uber the entire time and he and I know another guy that hasn't dri- that that doesn't drive, and uh, and and he's even like, you know, usually it's like, oh, I, I hate booking him for stuff because I am like, well, how are you getting here? Do you have to get a guy to give you a ride? Are you are you taking the, the public transportation? And then then realizing like, he's just taking an Uber. Uber. He's good. He's fine. Right. You know, yeah. I, I was trying to sell him on a zip car. Then he told me about somebody else that was doing like nine ninety nine days, you know, for rentals. And it's like, hey, cool. You know, at least you looked at it. You know, I, you know, if it's an option for you. So uh, you can really not need a car if you're in a, if, if you're in enough. And he's out in Bellevue. Wow. I, he, I mean, I lived in Oakland and I survived on zip car for three years, four years. Right. I mean, not, right. not a, no question, not, a, not an issue. I mean, it was so easy. You have enough. I have one at the top of the hill, yeah. so it's a little more of a concern for me. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like three John blocks. Julie, you've impressed me twice now. <laughs> what? <'Cause> like, <laughs> I find Pittsburgh a really hard city to exist in without a car. It's a tough one. I've, it's like compared to some other ones, but good job. <laughs> uh, and I think living, living close to the city, like in that Oakland atmosphere, where oh, it's yes. a lot of college yeah. students, oh, yes. you're going to have, it makes it extremely easy yeah you're gonna have access to everything that, that you would need that's actually one of the big things that i miss is all of the mom and pop little shops like i would go down to the little italian grocer i would go to the in the indian grocer and like 
I could make I could take an hour on a Saturday and do all of my shopping that I would that it now takes me like I got to drive a half an hour to Robinson and then I got to right. stop at 18 different stores and then there's all the lines. I lost, like, I lost a day in market district. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm doing that curbside from now on. We're going to pre-plan. I'm going to bring my groceries because it's like, it's fa- it's fantastic in there, but man, it is exhausting. I understand why they have a cup holder for your Starbucks with a guy playing a <laughs> guitar by the Starbucks and a cafe in there. Cause it's a day endeavor mm-hmm. and it's just for groceries. It's insane. How do, how do people do this on a weekly basis? I don't get it. Give me my drones. Send me my apples. I'm good, okay? Um, I'm 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 looking forward to that future, okay? Um, hell, e- hell, even even today, I I found out there's a farmers market market up at my co working space on Tuesday nights. I'm usually here, so I have no idea. Mm. <laughs> so um, that's fine. It's right there. I don't have to go out of my way. We're all good. All right. Um, I want to touch on a couple stories here before we get out of here. We're going. Quite long, actually. So let me let's pick two quick stories here. Uh, I have to talk about this because this just kind of blows my mind. Um, so we know Sesame Street, and Sesame Street's making some moves. It's now on HBO. So uh, Naked uh, Big Bird is going to be a thing, and and is that because I think that's how it works over there, um, right? Uh, but uh, this so this Wired article. Um, Sesame Street is getting into the venture capital um, um, industry, apparently. Um, and, you know, they're part of the children's uh, television workshop, so they, they, they have a lot of really interesting kind of initiatives, and they've done a lot of multimedia stuff over the years. But they're getting into um, actually doing some venture capital stuff uh, with some companies. Um, they uh, see if I can find the quote here that I was looking at. They'll be working with venture capitalist Craig Shapiro, something, something, something. Um, they'll be actively involved in choosing startups and offering insight based on this history and experience of working with children's programming. So again, it's going to be education based. It's going to be um, along those lines. Um, I think these are the people that do it because, I mean, this is this is the group that's really, really revolutionized um, educational television in the last 30 plus years. So um, they get the money to do it with that big bird money, right? Mm-hmm. So are we all when, children of the seventies here? Uh, the eighties, late seventies, oh, like really late seventies. Okay. <laughs> I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's interesting. I mean, I think the other thing that was interesting in that article, they've noted that um, they might consider, depending on what the venture is, uh, allowing the licensing of Sesame Street characters um, for the sales, which should, that wouldn't be the first time that has happened. Um, didn't didn't, I'm, didn't i guess i'm curious I, I think they mentioned something about like nutrition mm-hmm. or like they were lots of kind of outside the box ideas um i guess if it works i i know that they have a the mission of the children's television workshop has always been i think a really great one um i'll be curious to see what happens there, there's some cool tech that they've kind of done in the past that i wish would have caught on like they did some stuff with xbox and microsoft on the original oh connect the, with the connect yeah and like i didn't see that really grab a lot of the audience but it's something that i would definitely if if they had it for xbox one with christopher i would definitely pull up and and try out well it's tough now because uh sesame street you know when the three of us I guess we're kids. Um, you know, Sesame Street didn't compete with as much, right, you know, on television. Right. There weren't, you know, nine, there was no Nickelodeon and there weren't a hundred shows for kids to watch. It was one of the few. And, you know, to your point about it, not really catching on, look at how the comp, you know, there's a lot of competition there, and it's, it's tough, especially that you're, you know, potentially, I don't, I don't know the current state of like children's television workshop, whether or not they're for profit, nonprofit, whatever, but you know, compared to things that are backed by huge media corporations, it, it could be tough. Mm-hmm. And the, to me, the competition for for an, for a lot of parents and and talking to a lot of parents, it it's still it, it's still the the children's workshop. It's still the PBS because of the minimal commercials. The commercials aren't for a bunch of toys and games and right. junk to buy. Even though they do have a lot of marketing. I yeah. mean, I, I do believe Elmo was on a PNC bank. Uh, uh, well, ad. Yeah. PNC is partnered with, with them. Okay. But so that's like, yeah, it's a partnership, but, um, <clears throat> and they actually helped develop a lot of uh, kids savings games and stuff like that. So, 
But right. But what right. I'm saying is, is when you watch when you watch Sesame Street on TV, um, the commercials that are on there, there's like two commercial interruptions. The majority of them are for helping fund your local PBS channel. Right. Um, and then I think like. Uh, uh, what is it? The Chuck E. Cheese is one of them. But if you turn on <laughs> it Nickelodeon, still weirds, it still weirds me out that there's anything other than Sears and Robot Company <laughs> uh, uh, on your PBS sponsoring anything. Like I see U.S. Steel, I'm like, really? You know, uh, you know, stuff like that. It, or, or, or yeah, again, like Chuck E. Cheese in the middle of PBS. That just seems so odd to me uh, over all, after all these years. But like when I, when I turn on when I turn on Nickelodeon, mm-hmm. I get this 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 hockey puck that flies across the room from Blamo, and I get this other a toy. Barrage, right? You, like you get, it's, re- oh. it's, it's borderline ridiculous. The amount of junk they're trying to sell. Right. You. Right. That's why Netflix for kids is such a great thing mm-hmm. right now. Uh, just clarify. It's now Sesame workshop. I didn't know they changed their name and they are officially a nonprofit organization established in 1968, by the way. So they've been around a while. Um, there's some great Jim Henson. Um, actually, no, um, the Carol Spinney um, documentary, which is on Amazon Prime right now. That I think that's where I watched it. it was, I watched it a couple months ago. Very good. It really kind of goes along with what Sesame Street has done over the years. And, of course, you know, following him as Big Bird uh, over the years as well. Really, really good. Uh, really good and recommended. Hey, uh, are you getting that? Uh, yeah. Ter- Terry, I don't know. Do you have a USB headset? If so, you might have to unplug and replug it real quick. Okay. Um, so the Cyloning effect we always hear on those other shows. Chill. Why don't you pick one more st- story while she's getting uh, kind of set up there, and I'll have her do the same, and we'll uh, roll out of here for the de- for the week. Okay. So one of the ones, and this should be a quick and easy one. Um, speaking, we've we've talked about drones a couple times on this show. Um, a couple of times. Yeah. There's. <laughs> I think it's in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, they have decided to. To solve their illegal drone issue, I saw this. Oh, they're, I saw they're, them talking and, about this, and it's funny because we actually have a prob- problem with this in Dormont. We um, do, yeah, not with eagles. Wait, the birds or up. the drones? <laughs> the drones. Okay. Um, we have a drone that that tends to fly outside of people's windows when they're changing with a camera attached to it. No. Whatnot. Yeah. So it's it's become they call it the nuisance drone. <laughs> Um, do we not know where it's coming from? We know where it's coming from. There's yeah. the the legality and police are kind of question what the jurisdiction is and whatnot. And well, well, like, I'm sorry, if, you... if I'm a police officer, <laughs> I don't know what to do about that, right? right? Other than shoot at it, probably. Right. Um, well, then you have to call them and they they want to see it in the act. Yeah, like the, it, it's 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 become a nuisance. It's, yeah, it's become yeah. a nuisance. Um, so eagles taking out illegal drones um, <laughs> could be a solution. I love the anime gif of a of a of an eagle just going going ham on this. Uh, you know, it looks like a rodeo. When it's barn. illegal, it's illegal to shoot down a drone as well. Is it illegal From, to shoot down an, a, a hawk? I, <laughs> sure, that's, eagle that's that's taking down a drone. That's taking down a drone. <laughs> um, but I think this would be kind of cool. I mean, maybe I'll take up falconry and train train some. The Dormont Anti Drone <laughs> Task Force. You with your your eagle in tow. What would you name your eagle? I don't know. This is my eagle, Newton. Um, I don't know, but you could be like grabbing everyone's Amazon deliveries. I call like, him like Red everyone. Five. Red Five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, inversely, and we talk. I think we've sh- talked about it on the show that the Japan's uh, answer to this is another bigger drone with a net. Mm. Oh my god! That, that, ca- that, that, that the propellers catch up in, and then they, they can bring it back. So it's interesting to see. And what 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 country? This is uh, I think New Z- it was it New Zealand. New Zealand? No, Dutch. They're saying it's Dutch. Okay. Is it Germany? I the guess. That's Holland. That's Holland. Okay. Wow. The Netherlands. It'll be interesting what o- old world tactics come out of the Eastern Bloc. <laughs> when they deal with drones, um, so Terry, what, 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 any of these stories uh, catch your eye? You want to mention before we head out of here? Anything else going on this week? I was gonna talk about Sesame Street, so <laughs> <laughs> um, nothing in particular, but just like um, thanks for hanging with me, <laughs> not not being um, such a tech minded person all the time, but I really like I love hearing kind of what's happening because it's. Sort of regardless of what the topic is, there can be uses for me, for clients, for 
I, I don't know. I just, I appreciate it. And thanks. I hope I wasn't like too boring. <laughs> no, no, you're no, great. No, no. no, I think, I think we have some great conversations. I love this. And this is exactly what I like getting some different people in here, getting some different mindsets in here and mixing up, uh, every once in a while. Uh, and so it's not just uh, me and Chilla talking about whatever, uh, and, and making sure we're in line as well. You guys keep us in line. Cause like, we are like, yeah, that was a little over my head. Like, okay, we'll, we'll simmer down a little bit. That's cool. You know? Um, or when Chilla just confused the heck out of me when he talks about how he uses his mouse in his house, um, oh, we're going to do it. We need the to mouse do it. In the house, the mouse in the house. Um, we're going to do a tour at some point with Chilla, I think. Um, and just be like, how are you? Cause you always like, you always like, like let us peek into what's happening over there in, 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 in Chilla Stark, maximum Stark tower in Chilla tower and Dormont, <laughs> uh, as he's, as he's, you know, has multiple computers and one, one named Jarvis that, that calls a master and he, that, that is auto, that is auto training his, auto training his hawk, his, 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 uh, God, now there's his, an idea. <laughs> there you go. Just automate the entire process. We got, we got, we got, we got to get, cause I haven't been there for a while. And I, again, I know do a little, you know, everything maybe is we'll do changed. like uh, sometime in the summer, we'll do a cookout and walk through. <laughs> open house cook out and walk through chill central open house <laughs> and all of our patreons will be invited yeah, definitely <laughs> we should do it in vr i don't even need to show up there well if go. we get that samsung we'll do it and we'll That's simulcast in vr would it be weird if we did a street view of your house is that a little too much <laughs> no it's you know? not it's not weird because it and i don't know how because it's not there anymore uh-huh. But there, you used to be able to walk into my backyard on Street View, which was kind of <laughs> creepy. Oh my goodness! And what was even more creepy was someone tracked down based on the fact that they knew that I bought a house recently in Dormont. They looked up on like Zillow all of the houses that recently sold, Whoa. and then Street Viewed to figure out which one I bought. Like because then they because they saw the picture. They saw the like picture. Somebody listens to the show? No, it was a friend at work. So they they saw a picture of me on Facebook. It was a friend. It was a friend work. that yes, <laughs> that, and that's the creepiest part. So he he pings me and is like, "Is this your house?" And it's a street view, but it's a street view that links you to the backyard. Wow! <laughs> is it before or after you you redid the backyard? Bef- it was before. Okay, and. Because I didn't have any before pictures, and he's like, "Is this what it looked like before?" And I'm like, "Actually, yeah, that's what it used to look like." <laughs> I'm like, "How did you find that?" And he's like, "Well, I searched Zillow for recently sold houses, and I matched up the front front yard based on what your how, what your picture on Facebook looked like." And, right. and like, I'm like, "This is just odd and weird." Well, I mean, that's that's. But we're good it. friends, so well, yeah, I, that's I, good. It's, that's it's good. Cool. But anybody like, can. That's kind of where <laughs> yeah. we're at, and that's why Germany they want you to blur the faces, right? Yeah. Um, and actually, in a lot of places they do. So I mean, it's 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 understandable as this becomes more accessible. So, well, on that note, uh, well, hey, real quick, we have uh, well, I guess not so much a lot of stuff coming out. Again, you go over to Rivers uh, uh, Rivers Edge uh, PGH dot com. Um, we, uh, like I said, I had a talk over a river talk. We talk about a lot of stuff and, uh, check out the replay of this. Um, uh, I believe that's eight o'clock. Wait, did I, did I do this wrong? Oh, I wrote this wrong. Monday. Oh no, this is the one from before because we were on six to eight on Monday and, uh, we're actually on 8 a.m. So you'll hopefully had your coffee by then over on rivers edge, pgh.com. A lot of great talk over there and they're, they're actually having a one year anniversary party on the 13th of this month up there in Millvale. Go there. Information's on that website. Our friend Yajagoff will be there. Hey, shout out to the Yajagoff podcast. I got to hang out with them uh, Friday night and help them with their uh, on location at Wiggle Whiskey. Ran into Mr. Rick Seaback again and uh, had a lot of fun and learned a little bit. Uh, if you listen to that episode, I, I don't know if it's out. I think it's coming out sometime this week. Uh, I think Thursday they usually come out. Um, go to jagoff.com and uh, you, you can check that out. I think it's going to be episode seven, if I'm not mistaken. I uh, just look for the Wiggy, Wiggle Whiskey stuff. Wiggy Whiskey. Yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, a really interesting talk they had with uh, one of the guys there that talks about chemistry, how he's a chemist and he was uh, brewing beer somewhere in New York and 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 had a lab coat and everything. And now he's do, he's doing uh, distilling uh, uh, whiskey. 
Nice. So and now he's wears a t-shirt and jeans. So you got to switch up. So a uh, really cool geeky thing in the middle of the yeah, Jagoff podcast. Uh, a lot of fun over there. And uh, from there, a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, look at the uh, awesome cast Twitter. We we're, we're sharing out a lot of events that are happening. I'm um, hoping to have some cool educational things coming up, uh, um, especially here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, along with PodCamp. Um, and uh, just kind of follow along that, follow along my Twitter. I'm just end up a little bit everywhere these days. Um, Terry, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. And I got, I told you, I got to tell my dad what a podcast was because he wasn't sure. So <laughs> <laughs> to explain it, he goes, so you're going to this guy's house? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but it's been a pleasure. Thanks. Oh, it's actually the comfort of your living room, you know? That's like, right. They'll virtually be here, actually. So <laughs> That's right. Uh, thank you so much. And, of course, this will see business development um, uh, where you're working up there. Uh, quick pitch. Last, uh, last quick pitch. What, what, what do you guys do up there? What? what who, who am I if I want to go, go, go find you guys? Um, you know what? We look for um, business owners who um, – are not quite having the life they planned and they want their business to like lead to that great abundant life that they plan for. So, um, for everybody, it's different for some people. It's like time with their family, other people, it's money, other people, it's, um, like the ability to control what they do every day. So it's, it's business leaders and people that are in a, a position of, um, some amount of power and or ownership, usually ownership, and uh, that are looking to make some changes and do things differently. And, and we love to help them um, set goals, reach them, um, all that good stuff. So it's, it's a great place. It's very fulfilling. I love working there. Um, and our clients, I think, say really great things about us as well. So I used to be a client before I worked there. So <laughs> I believe. There you go. There you go. I'm not... I'm not just a. I'm not just an employee. I'm also a former client. You're like the hair club. I made the joke about the hair club for men one time, and I, I, although I made it, I didn't realize to an audience of all men, and I thought this was hilarious. I'm not just the hair club for men. President, president. I'm also a client. Ha ha. And everybody is just like, "You're a jerk." So, so I try. And John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. John Chichilla on the Facebooks. Yes. Come look me up. Find my backyard. On- <laughs> go look. <laughs> go <laughs> hang out. Go hang out virtually in his backyard. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's I don't mind. Weird. He doesn't mind. Me cast a suitcase. <laughs> as long as you're doing it over the internet, don't just show up and knock on my door. Hey, Speak man. <laughs> Let me see your basement <laughs> server. <laughs> All right, and also uh, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Big thanks to my wife, Missy Sorgat, Rebellious Flaw on the Twitters for helping with the notes and keeping me right in my stuff on on, on the text. Thank you to all the people out there, Jedi, Jedi Master Chilla in the in the in the chat room. That's, that's really, me. is yeah. that you going on here? Live dot uh, Sorgatron Media dot com. Thank you, uh, Amon's out there, uh, Bobby F J Town, Alex Carr's out there in California. This is this very Pittsburghy podcast. I appreciate it. Crazy Kraus out there in Windows Land. Oh, we need to talk to Kraus. Make sure he's okay. All right, because he's part of like the point five percent. All right. <laughs> You gotta Sorry. respect the point five percent. R.I.P. Windows Phone. I'm thinking. I when I, I gotta say, when I read the story, and I saw that that horrible image of the of the Windows funeral that apparently is their own marketing campaign they did several years ago from Microsoft. Um, um, I thought of Kraus. I thought of Kraus. And I thought it's, it's not truly dead yet. No, no. It's not, I'm not dead yet. Uh, you know. <laughs> Cue your Monty Pythons. Thank you so much. Check out everything. Uh, again, River's Edge, we're on there. Subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and all kinds of other places. Uh, awesome Cast on the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Facebook groups, and, uh, and AwesomeCast.net for all the awesomeness. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.